G'day everyone, another Back to Basics video. This one's going to be about the digital multimeter. There's a bit of information in this one, there's a few things that I want to cover. Um, so I'm going to be looking at the reasons why you don't need a multimeter to start off with, then we'll be looking at the reasons why you do need a multimeter. So if you're just building a couple of guitar pedals, all you want to do is build two guitar pedals, you could probably get away with not having a digital multimeter. But what you're going to have to do is, you'll have to learn to read the resistor values and capacitor values on the co by the codes alone. That's a helpful skill to have, whether you've got a digital multimeter or not. But it probably, might be open for debate, but it's probably going to cause more inaccuracy than if you use a multimeter. Um, because you can stuff up the color codes, that color, you accidentally think that a yellow is an orange or an orange is a brown or a brown is a red. And you put a 1K in a 1 meg spot and then your effect doesn't work. Um, so using a multimeter, multimeter doesn't care about the colors on the, on the resistor. It just tells you what the value is. Um, and obviously you can check to make sure that whatever component you're testing is actually working as well. So it's good in that respect, but you can get away without it. So you'll just have to learn how to read capacitor and resistor values. And also with testing, a lot of people that are starting to build guitar pedals think they need a digital multimeter so that they can test a pedal if it doesn't work. But the thing is that when you're new to electronics, you're probably not going to know what to do with that information even if you go through and test all the, all the points on the board and take and write down the voltages, you're probably not going to know what those voltages mean in the large majority of cases. Some cases, no, but majority of the cases, you won't know what to do with that with that information anyway, unless you've got a bit of theoretical um, electronics background. And I'm talking just like grassroots stuff. You don't need anything complicated. Just the grassroots electronics theory um, to be able to look at the look at the circuit and where all the voltages are and try and decipher where the mistake lies. So you could get away with not having a digital multimeter, maybe even 10 pedals you could build without a digital multimeter. But, and this is a big, this is a big positive for why you should have a digital multimeter. Even the worst multimeter that your electronics shop sells will be good enough for guitar pedals. It doesn't have to be accurate, it doesn't have to be within 0.1% or any of that sort of stuff. You don't need to worry about any of those things. Your first digital multimeter can be any cheap multimeter that you can find. You, I've seen them for $5 and $10 in the shops. In fact, I think most, even in Australia, the at JCAR, is, JCAR is the American Radio Shack. Um, even JCAR has a $10, I'm pretty sure they have a $10 digital multimeter and that multimeter will be good enough for you to do a lot of things with guitar pedal electronics it's a big plus if you've got the capacitor tester on it as well so for instance mine that little whoops that little symbol there that's the capacitor tester so you can double check so so try and work it out yourself first and then test it with the multimeter and see if you got it right because the capacitors can be a little bit tricky um, so that's another big plus for for having a multimeter. They're just they're just so cheap that it would almost not. I mean, just having one around the house is a, is a handy thing to have in case you need to test something, um, or you know, uh, you've got a cable that doesn't work and you want to work out which which maybe a wire's broken off or something like that. Um, they're just a handy thing to have around, and for ten bucks, it's not even worth worrying about if you ask me. You might get away with your first pedal. If you're only ever going to build one pedal and you, you just do not want to spend 10 bucks on a multimeter, then go for it. Um, but if you plan on doing any more than one pedal or you have a use around the house for one or that you occasionally find that you wish you had a multimeter lying around, then just go and get one. They do a lot of valuable things. You've got checking the circuit when it's broken for the voltages so you can work out what's wrong or it can lead you in the right direction as to working out what's wrong. Testing connections, testing uh, testing tracks on etched boards as well with that continuity mode, the buzzer that'll beep when there's a connection. Um, testing components for values, capacitors and resistors. Um, you can, what else have we got? The diode tester, you can use some 
if the multimeter outputs enough voltage, like this one pumps out a fair bit of voltage on the diode tester, it can light an LED, so you can use it to test LEDs. The list is extensive. You can test batteries to make sure that they're fully charged. If you're having a funny problem, you might, it might be a flat battery. You can test the voltage coming out of your, um, your power pack for your pedals. There's just so much stuff that you can use them for, it's ridiculous. Um, so you're eventually going to want to get one, even if you get away with the first pedal or two, then you don't have one, um, which is you know perfectly fine if you want to do that. It's your your choice. You know, you just build a couple of pedals, have a bit of fun, and I'm done. I don't want a multimeter. That's fine. Don't bother with one. But if you plan on doing any more than a couple, or you got to do, you're getting a bit of an interest in electronics, then just go and get the cheapest one you can find. Um, if it's got the capacitor tester on it, that's a that's a bonus. My first one didn't have a capacitor tester and I had to do it by eye, by the codes on the front and now you can throw any capacitor at me and I can tell you what the value is because I've done it so many times. It's just, it's up here. It's like driving a manual car. You, 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 it's, you just, you can jump in any manual car and you just do it because you, it's, it's, it's inbuilt. It's like riding a bike. You just jump on it and you ride uh, um, and that's what reading those capacitor values is for me because I've done it so many times without the assistance of a multimeter. But sometimes, with that said, a capacitor will come up that I don't know the value of or I'm not quite sure and that's when um, the mul I get the multimeter out. doesn't happen very often. One in a one in hundred, I'd find that I'd be like, mm, gee, that's a bit of an odd code and I'll double check it. But generally, I can do it by, by eye and get it right most of the time. So that is some reasons why you should and shouldn't. The fact that they're so cheap is just, just I mean, if they're 50 bucks or 100 bucks, um, then you'd probably be sort of like, oh, you know, that's a lot to pay for something I'm only going to use a few times. Um, but because they're so cheap, 5 or $10, uh, it's just something just to get it for your pedals. And even if you only build a couple of pedals, throw it in the cupboard and it'll be there if you want to test things, wires or whatever around the house. Um, don't be sticking it in the, in the PowerPoint. I should, I should say, just as a warning, because you'll kill yourself uh, unless you know what you're doing. Not for that sort of stuff, that's electrical, that's, a, that's what an electrician should be doing, not you. Um, just for the little things like connectors and, you know, testing batteries and things like that, um, they can be very handy. So I hope that sort of helps you decide whether you're going to buy a multimeter or not. Um, uh, they're, they're a very handy thing to have around. It's a, it's, it's a really is an essential instrument for electronics and people that want to do, even just the hobbyists that wants to do things with electronics. It's pretty much an essential tool. Like I said, if you're only doing one or two, you can get away without one. But if you're doing anything more than that, you'd probably want to get one. So I think that's pretty much it that I wanted to say um, as far as the digital multimeter goes. Got any questions, you can leave them in the comments found the video helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you found the video to be boring and you fell asleep, give me a thumbs down. Thanks for watching.